Hello YouTube, I'm the Gaming Pegasus 187 and this is Side Scroller Sunday Episode 10 with the first game I ever owned for the Nintendo Game Boy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Follow the Foot Clan. Yes. I've had this game for about I'd say about 14 years. Yeah. I actually bought my uh, Game Boy back in 2000. I um I actually soon got Pokemon Red after that, but with the new Michael Bay TMNT movie out, which apparently is getting really good reviews, I'm surprised. It's Michael Bay. Hello. So anyway, I haven't seen the movie yet. I've just seen the music video for the song Shell Shock, which the which looks really was actually really good. But anyway. <laughs> We are tomorrow, and I'm actually recording this half of the video on August the 16th, so SummerSlam has not come and gone yet. I figure get my uh, usual bullshit TNA other random crap out of the way first, and then the next half will be the big SummerSlam post my thoughts. And as of now, I pray to the god of wrestling, JBL, that Cena does not win. LOL. <laughs> anyway. Fucking SummerSlam. The, the Raw. Hogan's fucking birthday bash. Oh, how I don't give a shit. In the same way, I don't give a shit about the big Hulk Hogan WWE 2K15 Collector's Edition. By the way, the roster reveal did happen. There was one site apparently reported that Lance Archer was going to be in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Moron. Anyway. You know, you got obvious you Bray Wyatt's in there, which I'm happy for. You've obviously got Cena, because he's on the fucking cover. I don't know why, because he's John fucking Cena. He's apparently fucking Superman. But let's put it this way. Brock is going to be Doomsday. Anyway. Boom. Anyway. So. And I got my thoughts from but anyway, the... I did watch Raw. I did see, um, it looks like they, cause they had the big, you know, set up, and there was all these gifts, big red and yellow boxes out for Hogan for his birthday, and there was, a, I didn't see this, I, was this on that, I don't think this might have been on the, the abridged Hulu version, but it looks like, uh, it, Ambrose got to jump on Rollins, he was hiding in one of the boxes. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Let's be trying to do a Samuel L. Jackson. Anyway, I gotta stop saying that. So, you had Eva Marie versus AJ Lee, and Paige comes out, distracts AJ, and Eva Marie gets the win. Yes, you have the woman that just lost on NXT, all of a sudden get a win on the Divas Champion. Obviously, Eva Maria is not going to get a title shot. I pray to fucking God she doesn't. But then she goes out of the ring, blows a kiss, and they cut the page. She cuts her little um, rhyme pro poem thing, and it was really good. And, and they, they cut back to the fucking ring, and there's Eva Marie magically selling like a minute later. It's like all of a sudden she's like, oh, wait, I gotta sell this. Um, I, I wasn't. I'm just thinking, thinking. I got migraine or something. I don't fucking know. God, she's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Enough bitching about the divas aside. Let's get to the other big, you know, selling point of the show. Uh, there was actually two. You had Lesnar. You know, Heyman and Lesnar come out. They cut the the. They had Heyman were kind of rapping. It was fucking awesome. See, Brock doesn't need to talk. He just needs to sit, stand there, look like an intim the intimidating badass that he is, and Heyman needs to cut the promo. That's what you need. Lesnar does the shit in the ring. Heyman does the mic work. And then Cena came out, and, you know, his little promo with his new gear, and his fucking red and yellow McDonald's fruity pebbles looking shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, whatever. It's Let me get to B Hogan's Big Birthday Bash. And here's why I just don't care. I just don't care. 
as I mentioned last week, when Hogan came in, you know, he came in and he fucked TNA eight ways from Sunday. <coughs> he came in and he immediately starts feuding with Jeff Jarrett. He goes in, they go in after Bound for the War, the big 10 10 10, the big reveal of Immortal. They had a 45 minute segment opening up Impact. For 45 fucking minutes. An episode of Breaking Bad without fucking commercials is shorter than that. 45 minutes of this two commercial breaks of Hogan. So they had different, there was like celebrities that did like a little video message, like, happy birthday, Hogan. And I'm thinking, oh, I pray to God Justin Bieber doesn't show up on one of these. Yeah. I still, yeah, Bieber still sucks. He's always sucked. But, yeah, there was a side thing. I remember he hearing rumors that they wanted Justin Bieber to host WrestleMania 27 a few years ago. And you would you want to give me one good reason to actually purposely pirate WrestleMania or something like that, you know, stream as I would usually do at that time, because I didn't spend, you know, 60 bucks on a pay-per-view, obviously. But now you can watch on the WWE Network for $9.99 a month. Anyway. Yeah. Just put Justin Bieber on the show. Yeah. No reason. Put some little punk bitch from Canada who's really popular with the stupid little retarded kids who can't sing, can't dance, he's fucking horrible, on WrestleMania. Someone, one of these things just doesn't belong here. Hello? I don't mind celebrity involvement. I do mind it when it's completely fucking stupid. Okay, so, Owen's birthday bash. You had Jimmy Hart and Mean Gene Okerlund in the ring. They announce him. He comes out. All the fucking superstars and divas are there. Including Eva Marie, who's not smiling. Hogan comes out, does his usual st a shtick. And like, well, Vince McMahon got me a great gift, brother. He got me nine ninety nine. Yeah, and they, 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 this is literally... They, start, they just keep hammering that fucking nine ninety nine in the... To the ground, and then they, they Hogan gets his big, you know, red and yellow birthday cake, and looked actually really damn good. I wouldn't have minded a piece, but the candles were nine ninety nine. I'm starting to get really sick about hearing about about how much the network is, because more than likely, if you're any kind of wrestling fan, you more than likely have it. Because it honestly is worth it just for the pay if you want if you do watch every pay per view, it's worth it. If you want all the on demand content, you want all the the shit from WCCW and ECW and WCW and all this old school stuff, it's on there. But and then I guess they just they just announced that you can buy a month to month for it's like twelve ninety nine a month. So okay, interesting. But yeah, hammering this nine ninety nine thing home, and Hogan doing his stupid fucking shtick. And this was the last segment of the show, by the way. Of course, God forbid your go home show for when your your biggest pay per view of the summer. Yeah, remember when SummerSlam used to be? It, they really hyped it. It was one of the big pay per views of the year. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Anyway, and then. We have the guys start coming out. You have Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Walks by. Eva Marie is not smiling. Roddy Piper comes out. Again, Eva Marie not smiling. It's like she's so she's so fucking brainless and clueless. Like she doesn't realize who these people are. <laughs> the Outsiders, Nash and Hawk. Fucking Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. We get the big NWO reunion. In fact, Hogan is te tearing off the red and yellow for the NWO shirt. Got a huge fucking pop. Again, Eva Marie not smiling. Kevin Nash sings happy birthday. Thankfully, doesn't tear his... <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. Thankfully, doesn't tear his quad. <laughs> As if there isn't enough Kevin Nash tearing... As if 
sorry, this is so st- these Kevin Nash tearing quad jokes you'd see on the online are so fucking stupid. Anyway, he sings, and he actually Nash has a pretty damn good voice. He was getting into it. So, dun, 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 dun. Lesnar and Heyman come out, and Eva Marie is smiling like a Cheshire fucking cat. I was like, she's probably thinking, oh my god, Kurt Angle's back, or, actually, I don't think she'd even know who Kurt Angle is, but, and all of a sudden she's smiling. You're supposed to fear Lesnar, bitch. This is the guy that conquered the Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania. This is the match that was right on before your stupid fucking 14 goddamn diva one fall bullshit clusterfuck match that pretty much half the fucking audience was in the pisser for. That literally the whole crowd was dead because, again, the streak was just beaten. The streak was just fucking conquered. And you're smart. Maybe she thought that was the guy she's going to have to blow to keep her job for the week. I I swear. I fucking swear. The only reason Eva Marie is working in the WWE, because because she's god-awful, is because she's blowing everybody in the back. Ugh. Anyway... Bullshit TNA. I got two. One recent and one kind of going in the past here. Okay, so... Dixie goes through a table. TNA makes a big deal. They have a big press release. They post thing where you can download the GIF. And you can have the little animation of Bully, you know, powerbombing her through a table. You can download memes. And th- these memes are fucking horrible. I got 99 problems, but a boss ain't one. I'm sorry. There were much funnier memes created from that moment. My favorite being when Dixie was getting taken out on the stretcher. Iron Sheik stopped by Impact. Dixie was humbled. That's the best one. Oh my god. So, they are selling on their little, you know, online shop website thing. I wonder if they still have the Dixieland shirts. I would honestly buy one just to burn it on video. Yes. They have a... They have, like, different, like, autograph collectible things. Like, I think they have, like, autographed Sting masks. And they had, like, a... I bought one of the um, autographed... the One of the autographed uh, Aces and Eights mask things that was autographed by D'Lo Brown, which is cool. Because I'm actually a fan of D'Lo Brown. So I thought that was cool. But it's this big, memorable, like, collector piece. It's a piece of the table and a piece of the ring mat from the night Dixie got put through the table. Uh, and a certificate of authenticity. Nothing nothing autographed. There's no... Well, if it was autographed by Dixie Carter, I think that fucking... Uh, it's st- I would not buy it to begin with. But if they actually had Bully autograph the, you know, the section of the table. Actually, no. If he autographed it and he would personally deliver to my apartment, then it'd be worth it. But 200 bucks? You could buy 20 subscriptions of the WWE Network for that. <laughs> In fact, you could... Have the WWE for 200 bucks. You can have the WWE Network for a good close to two years at 9.99 a month. God, fucking TNA. I mean, fuck. Yeah, I don't quite get it. Um, well, let's see. Dude, let's see what we got here. Do 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 do. Let's see. Like, let's see. Player and teenagers we're talking, or we talked about that. Russo, Russo, um, uh, let's see what we got here. Where is the infamous? Oh, yeah, might as well talk about this classic reminder of Botchamania. So, for anyone that's seen that has watched any of the Botchamania series. It's a 
a video compilation of random botches and stupidity from not stu like screw ups from professional wrestling. Of course, you know Hogan Silvermania was on there. You had the infamous ah uh, fuck, what was it? You know, in the opening, there's the infamous Booker T. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you. And I'm not gonna say that except you know what. Yeah, Booker T is coming for Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that one. But in 2009, TNA had their big Victory Road pay-per-view. Now, this was... They, they had switched around their pay-per-view schedule. Victory Road originally was... As actually the first their first uh, three-hour pay-per-view back in 2004, and that was the November. That got moved to... Gen that became Genesis, and then Victory Road got moved to... July, and then I think it got moved to March? I don't... But yeah, pay-per-views names had, had gotten moved around over the years. In 2009, this is the infamous one that got minus five stars. In fact, you can hear it, it's in the Botchamania opening. Minus five stars! <laughs> Let's see. We had Tara vs. Angelina Love opening the show. Angelina won despite Tara sliding her foot under the rope, which should have negated the pinfall attempt. The loss ended Tara's first reign knockouts champion, which she started less than a month earlier by beating Angelina Love on impact. So, Tara wins the title on an impact, only to lose it three weeks later to the person she beat... Let's see, TNA showed a segment later in the show featuring referee Slick Johnson emerging, emerging from the showers with Angelina's beautiful peeper comrade, comrade Madison Rain. And despite being live on pay-per-view in front of a working camera, Madison told backstage reporter Lauren to not tell anyone about this rendezvous with Slick. Despite Slick's questionable actions, he refereed two other matches on the show and was never punished. So... Not only was this backstage thing shown, and then Madison said not to tell anyone, but he was never punished, and you basically had one of the female wrestlers giving favors to Slick Johnson in exchange for him making sure Angelina retained the or re re regained the title. TNA logic, everybody. At the last minute, Dr. Stevie, Stevie Richards, playing Abyss' psychiatrist, slash therapist, yes, there's a whole angle where Abyss went to the nut house. He was getting therapy, and the and it was obvious from the beginning it was Stevie Richards, because he's got a pretty distinct voice. From the neck, from he had a neck surgery, and it yeah, it's a very, very, very distinct voice. He announced the match with Abyss would be no DQ. Jim Cornette never announced that he approved the change, and Stevie didn't have the authority to change it, but everyone went along with it regardless. The only reason it was changed was so Abyss could use a taser on Stevie to knock him out and win the match, even though Abyss had already hit him with a black hole slam. The taser spot itself looked like something out of the electrified steel cage match with a loud phony bzzz sound and a ton of smoke shooting out from it while Stevie sold like death. Yeah. In real life, tasers don't go bzzz and they don't smoke like a fucking smoke bomb. <laughs> Again, TNA logic. <sighs> Kevin Nouch announced a big sexy tour valet search to find a female valet set to begin a few months after Victory Road, which spoiled the stipulation of Nash's match against AJ Styles. If AJ wins, Nash, re Nash retires. Nash easily defeated Styles with a choke slam, won the Legends title, and went on to do his valet tour, which eventually resulted in Jenna Maraska being brought in. Yes. You have a match 
between AJ Styles and Kevin Nash, which obviously isn't going to be your usual five-star classic, but it's going to be that a big guy versus like David and Goliath type thing. But you have a stipulation where if Nash loses, he retires. But right before that, you have him announce he's going to go on a, he's going to have the big sexy tour valet search. So you basically just spoiled the results of your own match right before. See, when ECW originally, when they had Raven vs. Dreamer at WrestlePalooza in 97, they had built it up as the final confrontation between Raven and Dreamer. Everyone knew that Raven was heading to the head to WCW. If you build it up as a retirement match, loser leaves town or whatever, everyone's going to know what's going to happen. So it would have been obvious that Dreamer was going to win. I mean, even then, Dreamer still didn't want to win that match. He wanted to never beat Raven. So, yeah. This is... I, I guarantee you this was a fucking Russo idea. I can hear Dixie Carr now saying, Oh, Vince didn't write that segment. Bullshit. I guarantee you Russo had a hand in this. <sighs> yeah, TNA Brian Jenna Maraska, a reality show contestant who had won Survivor six years prior for a few months. Hardly anyone in the fan or hardly anyone, fans and employees alike, could figure out why TNA had hired her in the first place. Uh, here's why, because they like wasting money on reality TV stars. They're still wasting money on Jesse from Big Brother. Yes. He's still there. Why? Because fuck you, that's why. That's the only explanation I could think of. <sighs> she stuck around the main event mafia and did absolutely nothing. Johnny Fairplay all over again. Although I think she made more appearances and I think was on TV more than Fairplay was, but then again I'm not I wasn't counting. Then antagonized the hell out of... And it ended up being booked in a match against Charmel on this pay-per-view. After eight agonizing minutes of two non-wrestlers... Albeit Charmel being Booker T's wife. So I think she would have at least some training and some... Knowledge and know at least some... Something and kind of know what she's doing. Oh god. Yeah, they were doing the worst in-ring performance in women's wrestling history. Um, although I would think Trump versus Rosie on Raw might be a close second. Or maybe first, or they're tied for first. Yeah, that did happen. Donald Trump versus Rosie O'Donnell on Raw. The guy playing Trump had an overly fucking stupid hair piece. Rosie O'Donnell was fat as shit, came out to some fat ass music. Wah, 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 wah. Like something like that. It's, it seriously sounds like fucking fat ass music, people. <laughs> fans knew it deserved the label of worst match of the year. Some fans still think of this match as the worst worked match in the history of pro wrestling. The Wrestling Observer gave the match a minus five stars rating. <laughs> Yes, minus five stars. And the match soon found its way into Botchamania and its intro, and the Disaster Peace Theater as its third entry, as well as the second from TNA. TNA reported playing Maraska, ha paying half, half a million dollars for TNA appearances. Reportedly, soon after, TNA rejected a small pay raise for Gail Kim, a move which caused her to leave TNA for WWE, and then did absolutely nothing for WWE, even when they brought in, you know, Awesome Kong, they could have been something there. Nope, they did nothing. It's like she was, the, she was really just there. They have one of the best female wrestlers of the, you know, still, of the, the current era, on their roster, who had actually won the women's title, on her first night on Raw back in 2002, everybody. 
They did nothing with her. Yeah, it's... Yeah. While some people claim Dixie Carter's obsession with reality show stars Linda Maraska signing, Kurt Angle had also starred in, in her... With her, excuse me. Kurt Angle also starred with her in a horrible directed movie... Directed video movie titled Endgame. And starred a handful of low-budget movies... Okay, Angle, excuse me. Angle starred in a handful of low-budget movies around this time, thinking they would lead to bigger acting roles. They didn't. Numerous wrestling critics called the show the worst TNA pay-per-view of all time, and many of those same critics also called the show one of the worst overall wrestling shows in the in industry history. Yes. Victory Road 2009, everybody. So, that went on much longer as I intended. I'm already at 26 minutes. So, I'm going to try and bang through my my SummerSlam thoughts as quickly as possible. There, if the show goes as I expect to, there shouldn't be much complaining. There should be a lot of praise. But if Cena wins, I'm going to be raging like a motherfucker. Can you hear that, wrestling fans? The sounds of millions and millions of Kitty John Cena fans bawling their eyes out. It's a beautiful sound. We can bathe in Cena fan tears right now. Ah, what a good time it is to be a wrestling fan.